so you'll want to learn the MGS3 very easy speedrun. Maybe you saw your favorite streamers playing it. Maybe you want to start simple and work your way up to European Extreme. Or maybe you just want to be part of the MGS3 speedrun scene. Regardless, all of the top Western runners suggest learning very easy if you want to speedrun MGS3, especially if you intend on eventually learning higher difficulties. This is because Very Easy provides great learning ground for the basic mechanics of the game, with its very low barrier to entry, but high skill ceiling. It'll teach you the basics of movement, boss mechanics, and of course, CQC. All the while rewarding you for your continued efforts to improve your gameplay. This guide will serve as a basic introduction to the MGS3 speedrun, but not the game as a whole. It assumes that you have at least a very basic understanding of the game's layout, such as where you need to go, and of the game's core mechanics. Regardless, no gameplay has been left out in case you need a refresher. This guide was designed around the HD edition of the game, specifically the PS3 version. However, most things will work on all platforms and all versions. Between the HD editions, there are only very minor differences, and the PS2 version's biggest difference is the pain. However, because the HD editions have the largest audience, that's all we'll focus on for now. I, along with all MGS3 runners, look forward to new runners challenging themselves and seeing their progression. And with that, I wish you good luck in learning to speedrun this game. If you're running new game, choose I'm playing the MGS series for the first time, or I like MGS1. Choosing I like MGS2 is slower because you'll get an extra cutscene, and choosing I like MGS3 is slower because the game gives you extra camos, which aren't helpful. East and west. Be sure to check the leaderboard rules to see when time begins and ends. First things first, I highly recommend using the Snake Eater camera in as many rooms as possible. It might seem hard at first, but I promise it'll make you a better player. Once you get the backpack, you'll have the easy gun, but don't use it yet. We're not going to touch R2 at all in the Virtuous mission. Movement in MGS3 is simple. There are no movement tricks to speak of, and Snake's roll is slower overall on level ground. However, rolling up hills and on stairs skips Snake's slow uphill walking animation, so always roll up hills and on stairs until you get the box. Snake's roll gives him an initial speed boost, then he has very slow recovery frames at the end of the roll, so use that speed boost to your advantage by rolling into load zones and cutscene triggers. The load zone at the end of this room is biased towards the left, so aim for the left side and you'll be able to hit it sooner. This is the first room with guards. Just shoot them with auto-aim while running. This is how almost all guards will be dealt with. Keep in mind that walking over a guard's dead or unconscious body will slow Snake down, but Snake can walk through guards at full speed while they're in their falling animation. Use this to your advantage by shooting some guards as late as possible, for example, the guard on the bridge in the next room. Rolling into guards is an instant knockout on Very Easy, but it's faster to just shoot this guard and move on. Shoot one of the guys on the bridge, then try to wait as long as possible to shoot the other guy so you don't get slowed down by walking over his body. Just tank the alert from the last guard in the room. You can try to shoot him if you want, just make sure you don't get knifed. Ross Viet in the Virtuous mission is all about taking a good line. As long as you move quickly, you'll be able to get through without getting seen or shooting anyone. Pay attention to how I do the cure section, I'm going to show an optimization. 
Here are the first three cuts. Then press right D-pad to switch to the last cut. Then cure the broken bones. At this point, you have the easy gun, but don't switch to it yet. Your equipped weapon and previous weapon will be reset after this cutscene. Very easy really benefits from taking good lines and direct paths, so try to always take the straightest line and most direct path that you can. As long as you have the easy gun on, you can just skirt past this guard's vision on the left. This shows just how poorly the guards can see on VE with the easy gun equipped. You can get the box in Ross Viet right now, but it's faster to grab it later in the warehouse. I also recommend grabbing the thermal goggles so you can more easily see the line through the minefield. These are just for learning, so don't grab these in actual runs. For Ocelot Unit, walk on top of the bed and roll out the window. If you don't get a clean rollout, just walk to where I'm standing in the video. Turn to the west in third person and shoot the guard on the roof. Don't turn in first person because that's far too slow and the guard will run away before you're aiming at him. Next, run to this tree. Stay close to the building and don't cross this line. This position influences the guards to bunch up around the barrel and prevents the shotgun guard from shooting you. Once you see all or most of the guards bunched up around the barrel, shoot it with a 1911. Sometimes you'll get lucky and the eastern guard will also be killed by the explosion. If he's not, just take him out by any method of your choosing. Sometimes not all the guards will be killed in the explosion. If you have any stragglers, walk to this position and take them out. Sometimes a guard or two will stand near the other set of barrels. Here's what the fight looks like, done at full speed, with no stops. It's a little bit faster to go back through Sokolov's house and roll through the window again than it is to go the long way around. But if you find this line too annoying, you can always go the long way around. You're also going to need the easy gun equipped as soon as possible, so equip it during any roll to avoid losing momentum. In the lake, it's faster to cross on the right side, although in reality you're mostly going straight north from where you start from. Roll over the crocodile, then dive into the water. Diving actually gives you a huge speed boost, but you have to dive properly. While Snake is wading through the water, mash X until Snake starts the diving animation. Once you see the animation, don't press any buttons on the controller until Snake starts slowing down, otherwise you'll cancel the entire speed boost. Once you're done with the dive, just turn left slightly and go straight ahead. Pay close attention to the line I take, it's easy to get lost in the lake. If you see the crocodile here, you're going the right way. You want to get out of the water just behind that crocodile. At this point, you'll have a leech attached to you, so you want to have the easy gun equipped as often as possible because it restores stamina. You're going to keep this leech for the whole game. Now, equip the thermal goggles so you can see the claymores easier. Right now, I'm pointing my gun at where we want to go. We're going to take a mostly straight line to get there. 
Just pay close attention to the line I take and try not to hit the claymores. This is what the line should look like in an actual run. You don't need to worry too much about alerting the dogs, they really can't hear you very well. The load zone at the end of this room is biased towards the right, so roll towards the right side to hit it sooner. There's only one guard in your way in this room, but as long as you have the easy gun equipped, he won't be able to see you. For Ocelot, you want to hold R2 while loading into the fight, so that way you have the weapon menu open on the first frame. Change to the easy gun and do an auto-aim shot on Ocelot. Wait till you see the red dot on Ocelot's back to fire. Once you've stopped him, throw a stun grenade at him. Timing's lenient, and it doesn't matter very much whether it's underhand or overhand. Don't turn away from the first stun grenade. Instead, face Ocelot. Once the grenade explodes, do another auto-aim shot on Ocelot. It's important to wait until the stun grenade has exploded before holding square at all, otherwise Snake will miss. Once that shot lands, throw another stun grenade. Timing on this grenade is tight, as if you're too slow to throw it, Ocelot will shoot you and run away, breaking the loop. Ideally, it'll be overhand, as this will make Ocelot turn around, giving you an easier headshot, but getting an overhand throw is far less important than just getting the grenade out of Snake's hand. From there, two headshots will finish the fight. Sometimes Ocelot will dodge or run away from one of your stun grenades. It's usually possible to continue the loop in this case, but sometimes the loop is unrecoverable. In any case where you lose a loop, it's best to aim at Ocelot with auto-aim rather than trying to shoot him in first person. Once you're comfortable with the fight, you can do a small menu optimization. Going into the fight, you can unequip the easy gun, which puts it on your previous. Once you gain control of Snake during the fight, just tap R2 to immediately equip it, saving a menu. Here's what the fight looks like, done at full speed, with no stops. You don't need the animal's camo, so don't pick it up. Your destination is a crawl space just through a corridor to the northeast, then straight north. Although the cave is much brighter in the HD edition than it was in the original versions, it's still very dark. Turn up the brightness on your display or capture if you need to. It's possible for this snake to bite you. If that happens, you need to cure it right away, even on very easy. You don't need to pick up any of the items in this room on VE, they're not helpful. For the pain, shoot him four times in the body which will make him put his hornet shield up. Sometimes he walks side to side instead of throwing his green hornet bait attack at you. Either way, the fight still begins with four body shots. After he puts his hornet shield up, throw a stun grenade at him. The stun grenade must be thrown overhand or it'll land in the water. After the stun grenade explodes, shoot the pain repeatedly in the body, quick reloading between shots. It's important to wait until after the stun grenade explodes to shoot, otherwise the pain will become invulnerable to the stun grenade and his shield won't go down. Phase 2 is the same as the end of phase 1. Throw an overhand stun grenade and repeatedly body shot him to end the fight. It's important to note that staying in first person is what prevents the bullet bees from hitting you, so stay in first person unless otherwise necessary. 
As you become more comfortable with the fight, you'll be able to incorporate headshots, which can finish phase 1 and 2 hits, and finish phase 2 and 3 hits. The hills in this room are intermittent, and everyone rolls differently in this room. Just do whatever movement you think is best. In the river, hold X and up while loading in to get into the water on frame 1. Make sure you have the easy gun equipped, then swim straight to the end. No need to come up for air. If you don't have the easy gun on, you'll get an alert and lose time. It's very important that you shoot the barrel here with the 1911 to damage the end. If you don't, the end strat won't work. Now just swim straight to where you need to go and don't put the easy gun on. You want to take this alert to delay the backup guard's arrival. Don't forget to pick up the box in Warehouse 1. Take these guards out any way you like, just don't get a caution or an alert. Grab the handkerchief, we'll use it later to die faster at the sorrow. Stay to the right so this scientist doesn't alert on you.
once you're done with the Grandin cutscene, it doesn't matter if you get any alerts anymore. Bump into this guy and walk away. As long as you have the easy gun on, you'll be out of his vision before he recovers. This is called a bump caution. Equip your stuns during any roll before the fear. It's really important to go into the fear fight with stuns already equipped. For the fear, make sure you enter the fight with stun grenades equipped. Hold L2 as you're loading into the fight, so that way you have the item menu open on the first frame. Use the fake death pill, which will make the fear run towards you. Once the fear runs close to you, he'll stop moving, then start walking towards you a few seconds later. Time your revive so that you begin reviving as soon as he starts walking up to you. I use a specific note in the game over music as an audio cue for this. Once you start reviving, hold R1 to go into first person, start turning Snake to the left, and throw a stun grenade at your feet. Once you throw the grenade, change to 1911 and begin aiming at the fear. After the stun grenade explodes, shoot the fear as fast as you can, remembering to quick reload once your magazine is empty. If you wait even a split second to use the fake death pill, the fear can stand behind you. If this happens, when you revive, be sure to take a step forward, otherwise the fear will bump you and make you cancel the throw. Also be sure not to throw your grenade so far that the fear is unaffected by it. It's fine if you're a bit late to revive, just remember that the fear sprints away quickly, so the later you are, the more distance the fear can create between you, making it harder to hit him. If he runs too far away, he won't be affected by the stun and you'll have to reset the fight. The stun grenade trick is a bug that both causes all damage to become stamina damage and removes all of his iframes. That means that the fear is always a non-lethal kill, so if the fear ends up escaping with very low stamina, it's faster to just finish the fear off with the easy gun than it is to reset the fight. As an alternative strat, you can use the knife instead of the 1911. Most runners find this harder, but some prefer it. When using the knife, be careful not to stand too close to the fear or you won't be able to hit him. The knife has a bigger range than you think. Also be sure to quick reload the knife to cancel the slashing animation. Cure the poison and leave everything else alone. In an actual run, you would keep the poison for the entire game, but it's much simpler to learn the game without the poison. Also, keep the easy gun on as much as possible from here until the ladder, since there's a chance the poison can cure itself on the ladder if you do. You can do a railing glitch in Warehouse 2 that's a little bit faster. To do it, roll on top of these crates, face Snake West away from the wall, raise your gun, and hold L1 to strafe. While holding L1, walk off the crates and press triangle once you see snakes start to fall. Timing is very lenient, so there's no need to mash. Plus, mashing is more likely to give you a slower animation.
The end fight begins at the docks. It's critical that you do damage to him here with the barrel, otherwise the strat won't work. Before entering the fight, be sure to equip stun grenades, then tap R2 to put them on your previous. This'll save you a menu during the fight. Once you gain control of Snake, run towards the edge of the cliff. At a certain point, the end will shoot at Snake. Hide behind this tree to dodge his shot. Throw three overhand stun grenades towards this general area. The goal isn't to land the grenades on the perch that the end is on, but to get them to land near enough to him to cause damage. Throwing them here will make the end stay stunned for far longer than normal, making the strat much easier. All three stuns must be overhand. If you accidentally throw any underhand, just throw another in its place. After throwing the third stun, turn away and equip the easy gun. After the third stun explodes, turn towards the end again. I like to use D-pad for this because it means I always know exactly which direction I'll end up facing. Now, the end is stunned for quite a long time. You need to get a headshot on him here, but take your time. You have nearly 10 seconds to land this headshot. After landing the headshot, the end will lay down and shoot at you. You need to dodge this shot by going into first person and holding R2 or L2 down fully to lean to one side. It may take some practice to figure out the timing and technique, but it becomes quite consistent. If you successfully dodge a shot, you'll need to buffer before shooting the final three shots at the end, or else you'll get iframes and run away. You need to wait until the end has fully cocked his gun and is ready to fire again. You can use either a visual or audio cue for this. If the end hits you, then just don't buffer. Carry straight on to your final three shots. Because your first shot on the end was a headshot, that gives you quite a lot of lenience for the final three shots. Only two of them need to be headshots, the third can be a body shot. If you're lucky, sometimes a third shot isn't required at all. Although the final three shots on the end require a much tighter timing than the first shot, I still recommend taking your time to aim your shots as you still have more time than you probably think. Remember, if you mess up the end fight in a run, the backup is to fake death pill and try again. It's never faster to chase the end into another room, regardless of how much health he has or which way he runs. After the end, equip both the Mosin and the box, and unequip the thermal goggles if you have them. We're gonna need the box for all of Mountains, and the Mosin's very important for the Fury. Now that you have the box, you're gonna use it on hills and stairs from now on. There's no known ladder skip yet, so there's no tech for this room. This room has quite a lot of slowdown, so in runs you would normally do it with the camera facing down, but I'm doing it like this so you can see the line. It's basically just a straight line to the exit, but you want to try and avoid getting any alerts or cautions in the mountains because of the last room of mountains. Try to equip your box while rolling into the load zone, since there's a hill right at the beginning of the next room. By far the simplest way to do Mountains 2 is to bump roll into every guard. 
It's possible to shoot some of the guards, but in all cases, it's either slower or much riskier. You want to avoid getting any alerts here. Pick up the RPG here so you don't have to equip it when you start bike chase. Huh? Huh? Equip your box while rolling into this load zone too. Ideally, you wouldn't have an alert going into Mountains 3, but it's fine if you do. Thematically, Eva tells you that she won't open the door if you have an alert or evasion, but that's not actually how the mechanic works. Eva only locks the door if your status changes to an alert or evasion while inside of Mountains 3. Meaning that if you get an alert in Mountains 2, you can unequip your easy gun, which makes the guards see you better, and you can carry the alert through all of Mountains 3, and the door will never be locked. If you go in with an evasion, you would put the easy gun on and make sure it doesn't turn into an alert. The line through the room is the same regardless of your alert status. It's very important that you don't pick up the noodles in this room, otherwise you won't have any food during EVA Escort. This roll onto the ledge can be kind of tricky at first, so just pay close attention to where I roll at. I roll just past the wooden support wall on the east side of the trench. The Fury is the biggest instance of RNG in the run. At the start of the fight, the Fury can land in many places, but four landing spots are most common. Although the Fury's initial landing spot is largely random, it can be influenced by your movement as the fight starts. In my experience, the most effective line to influence the Fury favorably is to move east as the fight starts, getting as close as possible to the dividing wall just east of Snake when the fight starts, then crossing over to the other side of the dividing wall. The basic Fury loop is to shoot the Fury until he falls over, then get him to shoot at Snake. If the Fury can't see Snake after shooting at him, he'll try to charge his jetpack to jump away. With a bit of luck and skill, this cycle can be repeated as many times as necessary. To avoid confusion, I call one side of the arena Barrel Side and the other Non-Barrel Side. I call them this simply because one side of the arena, the East Side, has barrels visible at the south end, but the other side does not. The ideal initial landing spot is barrel side, close. This position makes the Fury most likely to loop completely, so that's the spot we'll focus on first. So, once the Fury has landed, shoot him three times with the Mosin, which will knock him over. Remember to quick reload between shots and to hold R1 so that you don't have to readjust your aim after every shot. On very easy, the Fury tends to not fall off of the platform when you get this spawn, so I recommend just immediately shooting him three times until he falls over. After that, equip the box and wait for the Fury to stand up. Remember that the box is fireproof, so equip it if you're ever lit on fire or if you need to walk over or around standing fire. From here, make sure you're close to the Fury and within his line of sight, otherwise the Fury often won't shoot at you and will either run away or instantly jump away. Once the Fury shoots at you, take cover behind the wall. After he's done shooting, he'll most likely start charging his jetpack to jump away. At this point, shoot him three more times to end the fight. The loop is more or less the same for the other initial landing spots. If the Fury lands barrel side far, simply roll onto the higher platform after knocking the Fury over and continue the fight as normal. If the Fury lands non-barrel side and on the higher platform, shoot him three times with the Mosin, then move closer and continue the loop as you would if the Fury had landed barrel side close. 
In some cases, it'll be necessary to roll onto the higher platform with the Fury in order to continue the loop. Otherwise, the loop remains the same. If the Fury lands non-barrel side and on the lower platform, shoot the Fury three times, which will usually make the Fury fall off of the platform and jetpack up. From this point, the fight is more or less resigned to being a casual fight, and you should resort to the backup. In any event where the Fury escapes and is able to get to the north side of the arena, the backup is to stay in the south side of the arena and snipe him from afar. Remember, you have a sniper rifle, so it's never worth it to leave the south end of the arena or to try to get any closer to him at this point. The Fury is by far the most nuanced fight in the game, meaning there's so many things about the fight that a guide cannot teach you. Much of the fight can only be learned on your own through practice. The basics of the Fury fight are almost identical on all difficulties, so if you plan to learn any of the higher difficulties, Very Easy is a good learning ground for the Fury. You don't need any of the items in this room, it's just suppressors, ammo, and medicine. This room also has quite a lot of slowdown, so look down as much as possible. If you find this line tricky, you can just go around the barrier and make sure the guards don't see you. It's only a couple of seconds slower. There are two simple methods for capturing Rykov. The first one is to shoot Rykov in first person as soon as possible. You can do this as soon as you enter the room if you like, or later like I do here. Keep in mind that your stamina would be zero at this point in a run, so the farther you are away from Rykov, the harder it is to hit him. The second method is to auto-aim on Rykov and shoot him while he's moving. The benefit in doing it this way is that Snake's hands never shake with auto-aim, regardless of stamina. This requires some practice, but neither method is too hard in the end. If Rykov escapes into the eastern room with the scientists, there's basically no recovery and you should just fake death pill and try again. Likewise, in pretty much any instance where you get an alert in this room, it'll usually be faster to fake death pill and try again than to wait out the alert. Regardless of how you capture Rykov, you don't need to worry too much about the scientist seeing you. He has to be pretty far into the room for that to be a danger. Equip the binoculars during your roll into the load zone, and try to tap L2 to put them on your previous before going into the next room. You're gonna need them. In this room, you can do a box glide along the wall by leaning against the window and while pressed against the wall, tapping L2 to equip the binoculars, looking left, and then changing into the box. It's important that you lean against the window, it only works around that section of the wall. It's also important that you be pressed against the wall when you tap L2, otherwise Snake won't clip into the wall and thus won't go anywhere. There's also no known torture skip, so there's no tech in this room either. Call the frequency 144.75 to open the cell door, then just tank the alert from Johnny. We're gonna keep this alert until the sewers. We also don't need to take out the transmitter or the fake death pill, so we're not gonna bother grabbing anything along the way.
In this room, stay close to the wall, otherwise that shield guard will bash you. Roll past this barrel, otherwise a dog will pounce you and knock you over. For the Sorrow, you get all of your equipment back, so equip the Handkerchief and attack three times to knock Snake unconscious. Once he hits the water, he'll drown instantly. The Handkerchief is faster in RTA, but if you're ever playing for IGT for any reason, it's faster to just drown Snake since the Sorrow doesn't count towards IGT. The only item in this tunnel that you actually need is box B, but all this other stuff is in the way, so it's just not worth it to avoid it. It is, however, very important that you pick up box B. We're gonna use it in the next room. Now you need to equip all the stuff you're gonna use for the rest of the game. This is the last menu you'll be doing. Start with your items first, otherwise you'll lose about a second to a delay in opening the item menu. Equip the fake death pill in box B, then, for weapons, you need the easy gun, SVD, RPG, stuns, and C3. Be sure to unequip everything you don't need. Once you start doing runs and get good at the game, you won't need to equip the fake death pill, but for learning purposes I definitely recommend equipping it. The trick in this room where you make all the guards run away doesn't work on VE, so we're gonna have to do this the old fashioned way. Keep your easy gun equipped until you pass this guard, then you can change to your C3.
Scientists and mechanics will never alert on the box, so always wear it around. Pick this guard out any way you like. I like to roll into him. Vulgan's a pretty simple boss, especially on very easy. For phase one, once you gain control of Snake, simply run towards Vulgan and CQC slam him by holding circle while running towards him. Once Volgan is down, equip the SVD and shoot him in the head until phase one is over. For phase two, run close to Volgan and equip your SVD. His first attack in phase two will always be the 360 degree bullet attack, so just let the attack hit you. Once the attack hits Snake, start shooting Volgan with your SVD. Once he crosses his arms, he gets iframes, so use this time to quick reload, then start shooting again to end phase two. If you mess up phase one, simply run behind Volgan after he stands up and shoot him. He'll always try to show off after standing up, so it's very easy to get these shots and not all that costly to mess up phase one. If you mess up phase two, the backup is similar. Run behind Volgan while he's attacking and shoot him in the back to finish the fight. Bike chase is extremely simple on VE. In this room, all you need to do is look up to reduce slowdown. Shooting the guards or the Shagohod will only cause you to lose time due to slowdown. The reason looking up saves time is because when the frame rate drops in MGS3, the game slows down. However, the IGT continues counting at the normal rate, meaning you're making less progress in the same amount of time. Therefore, maximizing frame rate saves about 25 seconds over the course of the entire bike chase. If you're on an Xbox One or newer platform, there's already no slowdown anywhere in the game, so it's not necessary to look up. This also means you don't need to worry about the slowdown caused by shooting the RPG too much. In this room, you do need to shoot some guards. Shoot the four guards by the barrels here, otherwise Eva will sit around waiting for you to kill them. You also need to shoot the guards in this section, otherwise they'll come as a second wave and Eva will sit there waiting for you to kill them too. Once you've taken out all the guards, put your easy gun back on. You definitely don't want to forget to do this because fighting Volgan on top of the Shagohod with no stamina is very annoying. From here, all you need to do until the cutscene on the runway is look up. Now, shoot the Shagohod until you've done one quarter of its health and damage, then stop. Aim for this sort of chin area just below the head between the two machine guns. You also don't want to shoot too fast, otherwise you'll cause the Shagohod to drop back, losing time. The reason why we stop at one quarter damage is because each shot on the Shagohod's weak spot during the fight does one quarter of its health. So, since the maximum amount of chip damage you can do before the fight is one third, any additional damage beyond the one quarter mark is just causing slowdown.
should one C3 charge. The Shadow Hut's not here yet. Keep your aim steady. 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 For the Shagohod, you're gonna learn the loop. The basic premise of the Shagohod loop is to stun the treads, then damage the weak spot. As long as both the treads and the weak spot are stunned, Eva will try to get behind the Shagohod and stay there, where you can easily repeat the cycle of stunning the treads and weak spot as many times as necessary to end phase 1. The Shagohod on VE only takes 3 hits to kill, so you only need to do 1.5 cycles to finish the fight. So, you need to hold R2 as you load into the fight so that you have the weapon menu open on the first frame. Equip the RPG and go into the scope, but don't move your aim at all. You're going to use Snake's aim drifting as a buffer to time the first shot. Once Snake's aim drifts into this spot, fire the RPG. There are many visual cues for the first shot, but the one I like is to look for the red dot in the center of the scope to line up with this line on the Shagohod's treads. Pick any visual cue you like, as long as it's consistent. If you landed the shot correctly, the Shagohod will get stunned and remain in place, not spinning. If you mistimed your shot, the Shagohod won't be stunned and will be able to turn freely towards you. We'll focus on a successful shot first. If you land your shot well, and the Shagohod is stationary, wait for Eva to get behind the Shagohod, then shoot its weak spot. Specifically, I wait until I hear the sound of Eva's tires screeching as an audio cue for when to shoot. Immediately after that shot damages the Shagohod's weak spot, shoot the treads. You don't have a lot of time to land this shot on the treads, only about a second. Be sure to aim for the treads themselves and not the metal shroud surrounding them. If done properly, the treads should remain stunned for the rest of the fight and no more tread shots will be necessary. The weak spot will have iframes for about 5 seconds, but you can easily see when the iframes run out by watching for the sparks and electricity arcs on the weak spot to disappear. Once the iframes are out, shoot the weak spot again. Wait for the iframes to run out again, then shoot the weak spot one more time to end phase 1. It's perfectly acceptable to spam RPG shots for the final two shots, and even recommended for beginners. Just keep in mind that the more RPGs you shoot, the laggier the game gets. So, to recap, a well-executed phase 1 opens with a well-timed RPG shot to stun the treads, shoots the weak spot when the tires of the motorcycle screech, immediately shoots the treads, then shoots the weak spot two more times to end the fight. If you totally fail to stun the Shagohod's treads at the beginning of the fight, it's unlikely that the loop will resume at any point, and you should resort to the backup and shoot the treads in between each weak spot hit on the off chance that you resume the loop. On VE, there's not much to the backup since the Shagohod dies so quickly. Just try to shoot the weak spot at any opportunity you have and shoot the treads when possible to stun them. If the Shagohod is turning, be sure to shoot the tread on the outside of the turn, which makes Eva more likely to be able to get behind the Shagohod. For Phase 2, you always start with the RPG equipped, so go into the scope as soon as possible and be sure not to move your aim at all. Once the back of the Shagohod's right side tread crosses over the aiming reticle in the RPG scope, fire the RPG. When you shoot, your scope picture should look something like this, where the red line indicates the back of the Shagohod's right side tread. If you're more numbers oriented, fire the RPG about a second after gaining control of Snake. Using this visual cue for the shot means that Volgan will always stop in a spot where you can easily shoot him. If you shoot too early or too late, Volgan will spin the Shagohod around into a position where he can block your shots with his shield. Remember that Volgan's shield will deflect your shot if Volgan's facing you, even if he's stunned. From here, equip the SVD and spam body shots at Volgan until you hit him once in the body. Then equip the RPG and shoot the treads again, then shoot Volgan once in the head to end the fight. If you take too long and Volgan gets away, just shoot the Shagohod's treads until it gets stunned and shoot Volgan with the SVD. Sometimes the Shagohod gets weird iframes and you have to wait for the Shagohod to start an attack before you can stun the treads. So here's what a good Shagohod fight should look like.
For the entire rest of Bike Chase, all you need to do is minimize slowdown. There's no need to equip the easy gun, you'll have plenty of time to restore your stamina during EVA Escort. In this room, it's slightly faster to look down with a subsistence camera than it is to look up in FPV. Feed Eva before curing her, that way you don't have to pause the game again to feed her later. Let me have some more. In the first room of Escort, you don't actually have to have Eva follow you. She'll teleport to you once you trigger the cutscene. By far the most important thing in Escort is to keep Eva moving. Anytime she's not moving is time lost. Also, stay somewhat close to her so she takes better lines. If you get too far away, she'll take some really bad lines. Take out all the guards in this first part of the room so you don't get an alert. If you or Eva get an alert, Eva will stop to shoot all the guards that she can see. From here, just shoot this one guard. He's the only one in our way. The boss loop consists of multiple cycles of shooting the boss twice in the head, slamming her, then throwing a stun. On very easy, three cycles of this will end the fight. 
The boss will always open the fight with the CQC charge, which you'll need to parry by pressing circle once the red exclamation point appears above Snake's head. Timing is lenient. You have until it disappears to press circle, which is a little over a second. If you ever fail a parry, you can escape her counter CQC by spinning the left stick and mashing square, triangle, or circle. Once you've parried her CQC, shoot the boss twice in the head with the easy gun, then unequip your gun and CQC slam her. Careful, you can't CQC the boss from the front, so stand beside her. Look straight up and throw a stun grenade. There's really no such thing as throwing it too late, but you can definitely throw it too early, so take your time. Now repeat this cycle until the fight's over. Remember to wait a couple seconds before shooting the boss after throwing the stun grenade, otherwise you'll knock her over and she'll get iframes. In a well-executed fight, the fight should end on the CQC slam of the third cycle. When it comes to landing the second headshot in each cycle, don't chase her head, let her bring it back into position. You only need a slight adjustment for the second shot, and you have more time to land that shot than you might think. If you fail to land the second headshot and the boss starts shooting at you, just wait for her to charge you again and resume the loop from there. If you throw your stun too early, just shoot the boss in the head while she's on the ground and wait for her to charge you again, then resume the loop. And there we have it. Congratulations on learning the MGS3 VE speedrun, and I look forward to seeing some new names on the leaderboard. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, I or any of the other skilled MGS3 runners will be happy to address them in the Metal Gear Speedrunners Discord server, an invite to which can be found in the description. Good luck in your first runs, and all runs to follow. Goodbye.